Imani, thanks so much for speaking with me. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Um, I loved the film. I thought it was, it really is, it really is something. Um, it's very powerful and, and feels very honest. And um, I didn't realize watching the film, uh, I didn't realize till after the fact that it was based on a, the story of Martin. Hmm. Um, and and I, I especially didn't realize what the relationship that the two of you had. Uh, can, can you talk a little bit, little bit about that? It, it sounds like there's a great deal of trust between the two of you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, we got to know each other quite a long time ago when we were both in our early 20s. So it's like almost 15 years ago when um, he released his first, I mean, his, his autobiography in the shadow of San Siro that deals with his, his life as a footballer. Um, and um, it was quite a bomb in, in, Europe, in Europe when when that book came along because it was really the first glimpse into this underbelly of uh, you know of the professional uh, football industry or soccer industry. Uh, and I was at the time a 22 year old novelist that just came up with my first book and I had some dreams about making my first short movie at the time. so I wasn't really in a position to put it on the big screen. Um, but uh, a drunk night out, we uh, made a pact. Uh, that's always when you do the best, the best decisions, right? Um, <laughs> so we made a pact that um, he would say no to everybody who proposed him about making, uh, that wanted to option the book and, and, and his, his life story. And he would wait for me uh, and uh, I would, from, from my side, when I, when I felt that I was ready and when I was good enough to, to, to actually make this quite complex story right. as a film, uh, I would do it. So it took, took a couple of years and I made a couple of films in between. Uh, and over time, we not only became quite close friends, but also this, this film kind of evolved into the idea of making a trilogy about world of sports and and you know the the psychological political and financial aspects of it absolutely yeah and, and i mean i i find that so interesting too that this is one piece of a larger sort of exploration of the world of sports for you um i was wondering why you chose to do things that way and what aspects of the world most interested you to look at great question um I mean, you know, sometimes you can really feel in 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 some films that the filmmaker actually, you know, came up with the idea in in a frustration of the kind of the, the films that already existed. I mean, you know, when you watch Drive, you can really sense that the filmmaker behind it hates Fast and the Furious. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, I think in that sense, I've been extremely frustrated by uh the sports films available because they're all most of them are pretty much the same and they for me they they the most of them actually portrays a rather fake idea of how the 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 the, the modern day sports industry works so I felt, uh, first of all, as a viewer, that I wanted to see a film that actually deals with, with um, you know, the, the, the complexity and the psychological toll that, that these uh, athletes go through. Um, and then I also realized that it's such a good setting for telling stories that, that surrounds, um, that, 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 that circles around questions that I'm interested in. I mean, especially the soccer world is a, you know, it's almost like a fun house mirror of, of, of all these, you know, um, topics that I, that, I, that I think are quite interesting to explore on film, like capitalism uh, or um, masculinity. Um, and obviously also this psychological aspect uh, so that's why I, I so I started with the idea of tigers, but 
the first film that came out was a couple of years ago, uh, a film called Borg versus McEnroe, um, which Shia LaBeouf and Sverre Gudnason and Stellan Skarsgård. Um, so, so that one was really about rage, while this one maybe is a bit more about, you know, a coming of age, but in a world where everything and everyone is for sale. Yeah, yeah. It, and actually, that was one of the things that I, I thought was so interesting about the film is this idea of value. You know, like here you have, um, here you have people who have the world at their feet but they are very much commodities uh, to, to their clubs, to, to their fans. I was wondering what, what you think it means to have value uh, in this environment. That I actually put a lot of thought into that while making the film. To me, that's maybe in a way what the film is about, you know, that financial value versus human value. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a way, the the higher his price tag gets uh, in the film, the lower his human value and self-esteem and uh, sense of, you know, he, he, it's almost as if as if his financial value kind of uh, uh, decreases his 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 right to be a human being. Um, the further into the film you get, and and I think it's it's um, it's very complex, especially in in. I mean, in this in the world of sports, maybe especially outside the U.S., because in the U.S. it's all about the personal contract, uh, you know. While in Europe, mm -hmm. for example, it's about buying or selling that contract, so it's someone else making the money, uh, yeah. and and that is that makes it into even you're even more a commodity because you're not even working for yourself you're working for someone else and it's always someone you're almost like a stock on a market um uh with with a value that goes up or down um and and i think it's um that financial aspect obviously is also you know quite interesting to work with as, as a as a cinematic tool because it's not so many environments where you actually have a price tag on a person. Uh, but in the, in the world of soccer, it's extremely present. Yeah, it, it is so interesting because again, uh, from Canada and, and not being as familiar, I mean, we have uh, football, soccer here as well, but you're right. There is that shift where, you know, a player hits free agency and, oh, they're going to get their money, you know, oh, oh what, what am I worth? But it is interesting in a film like this because it shows that the team is deciding what they're worth in, in many ways, in many cases. And, and there, you know, there's, there's a, a particular player in this film who is, is sold. They're not, the, it, and they're just dashed away because, because the team said, didn't, didn't like their behavior. It's fascinating. It's, it's such an interesting shift in the way that they're, they're viewed. And, uh, you know, it, and it's interesting, too, because, again, like in when we when you hear about the world of soccer, um, like it feels like the salaries are higher. These player players uh, have the world at their feet. But at the same time, they they're suffering. They're legitimately suffering. Some of them. Um, and I was, you know, based on a story like this, based on, you know, uh, Martin's book, based on telling the story, have you seen or heard anything about teams adapting to help their players through these issues and and if so how i mean there are there are uh, efforts made now and then and i think generally that that the, the clubs the top clubs are are more aware of it now than 10 or 15 or 20 years ago but on the mm -hmm. other hand the pressure is much much higher now than it was 10 or 15 years ago on the young players because of social media and the kind of attention they get much earlier so i would say it's probably worse than ever uh, mm. but at the same time there are efforts i mean and i think the the really the real big shift will come the minute when top clubs realize it's good business to take care of the players mm. i think that's the thing because for example, the Swedish national team hired a full-time psychologist, uh, which 
not on not you know even for that's, that's quite you know odd for a, for a national team but they actually took the players talk a lot about what a difference that have made for their you know their sense of belonging in the team and how they work for each other i think it's 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 going to be the next big revolution in not only uh soccer but in sports uh, in general will be the psychological aspect mm-hmm. uh, one of the things i loved about the film there's a there's a wonderful conversation um about who we are versus what we do you know who who are you i'm a footballer that's not what i asked um i was wondering why do you think that we find it difficult just in general and we confuse those two things. Why is that so difficult for us? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I guess the the more you put into your, to your work and the more it it becomes a part of who you are, um, it becomes your first identity. I mean, it's the same for me. If someone asked me who I am, I would probably say I'm a writer or director. Um, even I would probably say that, to be honest, I would probably say that before I say that I'm a father of, of two boys, for example, or that I'm married or that I'm Swedish or um, and, and for me, that's cool because I, you know, I don't suffer from being a writer or a director. It's 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 a huge part of who I am. But, but of course, if, if I make a film that flops, that makes me much more vulnerable, obviously. Uh, and and. Uh, I think there are dangers with um, with it, but I'm 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 not sure there's any other way if you want to succeed. I mean, because it's 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 um, I guess that's one thing all these three films in the trilogy kind of deals with is what 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 do you need to do in order to be successful within this world, and what are what do you have to sacrifice? Uh, where maybe the third film that will be shot next year, uh, which is called Perfect. It's, it's, it's a film about female gymnastics in the US. Um, that one might be the one that actually pushes that question uh, as far as, as possible, basically. Uh, and and um, I don't really have the answer. I mean, I think it's, it's uh, there, there's a complexity to, to the sports world in the sense that it is extreme people that are drawn to this world. I mean, even Martin Bengtsson, even the real Martin Bengtsson is, is a quite extreme person in the sense that he's, he knows what he wants. And when he wants something, he really goes for it. Um, and and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a fantastic side of him, but it's obviously also a dangerous side. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, as, as we start to wrap up, Ronnie, um, I was wondering, you know, the film is phenomenal. Is there anything in particular? What do you want people to know most about Martin's story? Um, I mean, what I what I what I wanted, what I set out to do was really to enter this quite spectacular and uh, quite closed world that no one's really had an opportunity to get a glimpse of before uh, through the eyes of a 16 year old. I wanted Mm -hmm. to make a very subjective movie uh, of entering this world of, of, you know, professional soccer at a very young age. Uh, And I just want, you know, I just hope for people to immerse into that uh, experience and to really be there with Martin in the movie. I mean, that's why I'm, um, you know, w- when he's making his first match on the big, uh, the, this enormous stadium, San Zero in, in Milano, for example, I, I'm not doing it with the big, uh, you know, this big scope shots of, of audience, or I'm, I'm going in on the pitch with him, handheld. Mm. Uh, and, and for me, that was always a, an important choice in the movie. And that says a lot about the movie. It's, it's, a, it's a film that that um, follows Martin into this world. It's not really, you know, we're, we're not watching him, we're with him. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, that's interesting that you say that because absolutely it feels, it feels very, very personal. This isn't a, 
a broad scope feels it's about this this one young man um and it's it's truly great i i really thought it, the film was powerful it was really well executed and and well written so thank you so much ronnie i really appreciate the time to to chat with you thank you so much and thanks for your kind words thank you at any time anytime um, thank you.